Well, uh, the Aus, Aus, I mean the Arab Women's Solidarity Association. And with, after I came out uh, from prison under Sadat, I've, I never believed in joining a political party or a woman organization. I was a very individual writer, you know. But when I was put in prison and I was threatened, so I felt that we need an organization because they can kill an individual. They can imprison him. But with an organization, it's very difficult. So we started the Arab Women's Solidarity Association in 1982. And the government struggled against us. They didn't want to register us in the Ministry of Social Affairs. And we have to fight three years. And, the, and then we gained the re registration within the Ministry of Social Affairs in Egypt. And then we gained status with the United Nations as an NGO, non-governmental, with the Economic Social Council in New York. And, and we worked for a while, but all the time the government was really interfering with the local Egyptian group and limiting our freedom. But we were working internationally and pan-Arab, etc., as an, because we were an international group and a local group. And we were very active. We started the first international conference of AUSA uh, in 1986. And every two or three years, we, we have an international conference. The last conference was just a few days ago when you, you attended that. Uh, and, and we had also many activities in different Arab countries for many years. And then when in 1991, when the Gulf War started, the first Gulf War started, uh, we had a conference, an Arab conference in Cairo here, and we condemned the war. Uh, the, the war didn't start yet. We, said, we, we condemned also Saddam Hussein. We condemned the invasion of Kuwait and said, we said this is not, this is wrong and Saddam should retreat from Kuwait. And also we condemned the, 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 the war that U.S. was threatening to. So the, the Egyptian government, Mubarak re regime, uh, followed George Bush the father in the war and we were against that. So the government punished us by closing down the local branch of AUSA illegally. And we took the government to court, but the court is part of the government. So we never uh, regained our, uh, our local up till today. But we are very active internationally and pan-Arab and we continue with our... They tried to, you know, they tried to prevent... The police tried to prevent this conference, this last conference, yes. But what, because they, they in fact prevented me from any public meeting since I declared I'm running against Mubarak. They stopped my meeting in the village. I had to, to I had to give a lecture in uh, Alexandria library and they stopped, the police stopped all public meetings. And they called me and they, ca they called the director of the library where we had the conference. And they told him, what's that? No conference we have. And uh, then we, we struggled and we had, and then we told them, if you prevent the conference, it will be a scandal because we are expecting 150 participants from all over the world. So it will be a scandal for Egypt. So they allowed the conference because they were afraid of the foreigners and also because of tourism. <laughs> they wanted tourism. So that's why we had our conference. So that's AUSA. AUSA, we are really having difficult time. And uh, because of the government, the government, I consider Egypt now uh, an American-Israeli colony. And the government is supporting that. And also the, the Islamic fanatic fundamentalist groups in Egypt are uh, co working with the government. They are two faces of the same coin, you know. It was Sadat who started them and encouraged them under George Bush the father, you know. And usually we say Bin Laden and George Bush are two faces of the same coin, you know. So anyway, that's the history of AUSA, very hectic history, but we are still surviving, which is amazing to me. It's well, when I was born a female in the village from a poor family, and I had a brother who was one year older than me, 
and I went to school where we had some rich women, uh, rich uh, students. Bint al Omda, Bint al Ma'mur, I hope uh, I can translate this, the, the daughter of the head of the uh, village. Mm -hmm. So immediately, myself and the children, we felt there is some, something wrong. Something wrong that we, are, we were born female, something wrong that we are poor. We felt that at home, in the street, in the school. So usually I say I became a feminist when I was a child. I didn't want to, I didn't need books to be a feminist. Just to be born female, and especially to be, be born female in the village, from a full family, you must be a feminist. And you must be also against class. So that's how I, and then when I grew up, I went to school, to the medical college, and I read, etc. I, this confirmed my feeling as a child. I used to walk in the street and the boys insult me with the names of the genital organs of my mother, say, you know, this is a very common name, or they throw stones at me, at my breast, you know, because, you know, I was, very, I was nine years, but um, my menstruation started when I was here, uh, nine, because I was tall, you know. And in hot weather, uh, young women mature uh, very early, relative to young women in uh, cold weather. So they used to throw stones to my st breast when I was nine years. So I was furious. That's why I developed my muscle to struggle with those boys. Mm -hmm. So at home also, uh, though I was very good at school, uh, and my brother was a lazy boy and he was spoiled because he was a boy, he used to fail almost every year. So they gave him uh, more food than me, a bigger piece of meat than me. In, uh, so I felt that discrimination, so I rebelled. And then in school also, I felt that how the teachers, they treat the rich girls better than us, you know. So in, I, I, I felt in every step, I felt discrimination by class and by gender and by race too. I'm delighted to be here and to be with all of you, and especially, of course, with Dr. Noel Saadawi, uh, whose efforts throughout uh, the past decades have influenced women all around the world. And I can't just say women, it's actually been men and women everywhere. I'm one of the generations who have grown up to have read her and to have followed her examples Good morning. I want to start, start by thanking again Nawal, who is such an inspiration to many of us, particularly to me. Nawal, who is a powerful voice which has encouraged us to speak fearlessly. Nawal, who is an engaging and engaged writer, whose writings have ignited our pens. Well, who inspired me? My grandmother, my peasant grandmother. She was a poor woman who, who was working in the field by her hand. And she was revolutionary. She was singing against the British. And she mobilized the village people to, to rebel against the mayor, who was stealing their uh, money and their, um, you know, their product. He was, at that time, uh, uh, Egypt was a British colony uh, and under the King Farouk and King Fuad and all that. So my grandmother, she was peasant, poor, but I remember when I was five years of age, she used to take me by, my, by her hand and go to the mayor. And I remember her, she was tall. And she was standing and behind her, a queue of men and women, village people, and the mayor was sitting like that with the Quran in his hand and well dressed and with the Quran in gold and she was telling him, you took our sweat, you took our sweat. Uh, uh, and they were poor, they didn't have food, so they, and the mayor was insulting them and say, tell her, you illiterate woman, you don't, you never read anything 
you, you, you never read the Quran, you, you are ignorant, you don't know, you don't know God, etc. So she answered him, she told him, I know God better than you, Mayor, because God, Rabbina huwa al-adl, irfu al-aql, because God is justice, and we know him by our mind. So that was the first lesson in my life in Islam and philosophy from my grandmother. So I was inspired. Every day she, she did something, you know. And then my mother, of course, I was inspired by my mother. She was uh, uh, also a rebel. She went to prison, my mother, for one day because she participated in, the, uh, in uh, one of the demonstrations. And that's why she married, you know, because her, her father was a military man. He had, he had to go to prison to take her out and paid the, the what you call the fidya, yes. And then he married her off after that. She, he, he told her, you come out, you will never go out. No, you are not going to school. And then he married her off to my father. You see, so my mother was rebelling and I remember that my father respected her very much. And all the time she told me, Nawal, you know, I, uh, uh, all my dreams in life were aborted by marriage. Though she was happily married, my father was an ideal husband. But uh, she was very dissatisfied with her life, just as a mother or as a wife, you know. So those really, who, and then I was inspired by many things and many people and many books, you know. There are many creative forms of dif uh, dissidence globally and locally. We call, we call it, we use it now one word, locally. I think writing, painting, dancing. You know, they dance, uh, they dance of Amy Scanberg, the Swedish, at the boat. Uh, she, this was great, which we saw on the second day of the conference. This was great. Uh, the, this, I think women, feminist movement and feminist uh, theories and ideas changed a lot, added a lot to the human thought generally. And they, uh, they in a way, they uh, helped in undoing the dichotomy between the body and the mind, between dancing and philosophy, between medicine and literature, etc. Between what's called spiritual and physical, uh, between the divine and the human. So I think the feminist movement between what we say private life and public life. So they, 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 they helped a great deal in abolishing, of course not totally, but somehow abolishing the gap or the dichotomy between these contradictory things, the physical, the spiritual and all that. So that's one achievement theoretically. Also in practice, I think the women movement um, um, played a role in the anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist, anti-globalization movement. Um, uh, you know, they played a role in that, in the international solidarity. Uh, they also playing a role against what's happening in Palestine and Iraq. You know, women movement all over the world. They are, uh, they are having a, a say against George Bush and and the Ariel Sharon and all that.